What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're counting down the top 10 Air Jordan 1s of 2021. I already know what you're thinking, I can already hear you click clacking away in the comment section down below. It's not the end of 2021 yet, how are you doing a top 10 list of 2021 in the end of September? But listen, I know it's not the end of the year yet, but we pretty much know every Air Jordan 1 that's releasing through the end of 2021 and most of the best releases we've already had. In fact, I challenged Jordan Brand to drop an even better Jordan 1 than we've already had throughout the year. We've had some bangers so far and if they drop something even better than what we've already had, I'd be down with it. But if this is your first time watching the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below so you can be notified whenever I drop new videos just like this. And also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram at Real Seth Fowler. So to give you all some background on how I created this list and ranked these Air Jordan 1s from 10 to 1, I basically did it based on my own personal opinion. And I know that doesn't sound like the best way to do it, but honestly, how else can you do it? Because they're all essentially the same sneaker. There are some high top and low top variants and maybe a mid top or two thrown in there. I'm there's no mid tops in the list whatsoever. But really, what other way is there to rank Air Jordan 1s than on their colorway, or I guess their hype, which I'm not gonna do. So I'm ranking these sneakers based on how much I like each one of these sneakers, and I guess how much popular influence they did have. But again, it really is based on my own personal opinion, so if you disagree, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm probably gonna regret saying that. But with all that being said, let's jump right into the list. Starting off the list at number 10, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Low Starfish. So this Jordan 1 Low is more of a recent release. In fact, I think it released in the last month or two. And while I'm not personally the biggest fan of Air Jordan 1 Lows, Air Jordan 1 Highs are definitely my favorite sneaker of all time. I still think it's a great silhouette. And when you put the right colorway on the Jordan 1 Low, it just pops. And the Starfish colorway is definitely the right colorway on the Air Jordan 1 Low silhouette. And it also doesn't hurt that it looks very similar to the Air Jordan 1 Shatter Backboard 2.0. In fact, it's pretty much the exact same colorway, but rather than being on an Air Jordan 1 High, it's on an Air Jordan 1 Low. And I know hype has a lot to do with it when it comes to people liking the sneaker because the Air Jordan 1 Shatter Backboard 2.0 is like a thousand dollar sneaker. But regardless, I think this colorway on this sneaker just pops. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of orange, I think on this shoe, it just works so well. And I think it is also pretty crazy to see the renaissance of Air Jordan 1 lows. This was a sneaker that back in 2015, no one really cared about. But now in 2021, people are paying crazy resale prices for the Air Jordan 1 low. It's nuts to see. And when you get a colorway like this, I totally understand why people are so hyped on this shoe because it's fire. Coming in at number nine is the Air Jordan 1 Hyper Royal. So out of all the releases that we knew about coming into 2021, I think the Hyper Royal Jordan 1 was definitely one of the most hyped. I mean, it's not an OG colorway. It's not even really an OG material makeup on this sneaker, but it's one of those shoes that just looks super clean and is also incredibly wearable. The sneaker features a white leather upper, which is overlaid by sort of a washed out blue nubuck material, which is accented by a gray Nike swoosh. And like I said, even though this isn't an original Air Jordan 1 colorway, it's one of those colorways that seems like it's gonna be an instant classic. I mean, it's sort of a mashup of like retro style with modern distressing, and I think it's a really clean look that you can wear with pretty much everything. And even though Jordan 1 highs I wouldn't classify as like a summer sneaker, this is definitely a summer colorway of the Air Jordan 1 high. And you know what? It's also not often that we get swayed on a pair of Air Jordan 1s. I mean, it happens, but it's not often that it's done well. And personally, this is still a pair of Jordan 1s that I am still looking to get into my collection at a good price. I'm not gonna pay crazy resale for it because it's not obviously on the top of my list, but it is on the list somewhere. Next up at number eight, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 High Atmosphere. So this is actually the first shoe on the list that has yet to release, at least at the time of filming this video. And you know what? This might be one of the most anticipated Women's Jordan 1 releases of all time. I don't know, maybe I'm getting a little crazy saying that, but I can't remember a Women's Air Jordan 1 that people have been this excited about. And I definitely think that stems from the fact that this Jordan 1 looks a lot like a very popular pair of Jordan 1s that released a couple years back, but regardless, it's a pink Air Jordan 1 with sort of a black toe color blocking, and I think that in general is going to be a very clean look that people are excited about. Now, I do have to say that the material makeup of this Jordan 1 is definitely different than a lot of the other Jordan 1s that we've had released recently. So the front half of this sneaker comes in primarily leather, a white leather and a dark navy leather, and then the back half of the sneaker comes in a light pink patent leather. And you really don't see a lot of patent leather mixing with standard tumbled leather on Jordan 1s. It's just not something that happens that often. But actually, the most interesting detail about the Air Jordan 1 atmosphere, you can't see from the top of the sneaker. You have to flip it over. And that's the piece of gum that's stuck to the outsole of the sneaker, or what looks like a piece of gum. It's really just a darker pink splotch on the outsole rubber, but it definitely gives the shoe a look of having gum stuck to the bottom of the sneaker. And that's really the entire inspiration behind the sneaker. The entire colorway is meant to look like chewing gum. I'm sure there's some sort of story behind this colorway about maybe Michael Jordan standing in gum and ruining his day or something like that. But regardless, I think it's a great colorway. I think even without the story, it's a dope looking sneaker. 
sneaker, and it's definitely one of my most anticipated Jordans of the year. Coming in at number seven is the Air Jordan 1 High Pollen. So I know what you're thinking, this shoe bears a striking resemblance to the Wu-Tang Dunks, and I totally see it, and I think that really contributes a lot to the popularity of this sneaker. The upper of the shoe comes in black tumbled leather accented by a yellow nubuck overlay. And again, even though this shoe looks a lot like the Wu-Tang Dunks, it's still a clean enough colorway that in my opinion could stand on its own and still be one of the most popular Jordan 1s to release this year. Yellow and black is just one of those contrasty, eye-popping colors that is not the easiest to pull off, but when done right, it looks great. And honestly, the material quality on the Air Jordan 1 pollens was better than I expected and better than a lot of other Jordan 1s that have released recently. The one downside of this sneaker is the fact that it looks a lot like a sneaker that a Steelers fan would wear, and that's just the worst kind of person. So because of that, I, I couldn't keep the sneaker in my collection. If it wasn't for my court purple Jordan 1s being cursed and the Ravens losing every time I wore them, I could wear them to sort of counteract this shoe and have this shoe in my collection, but it doesn't work out that way. So this is not a shoe I can ever own, unfortunately. Next up at number six is the Air Jordan 1 high 85 neutral gray. So there are a lot of reasons to love this sneaker. The first reason, as you can tell from the name of the sneaker, this shoe is cut just like the original 1985 Air Jordan 1s. And you might be saying to yourself, what do you mean cut like the 1985 Jordan 1s? Jordan 1s have been the same since 1985. But if you think that, you'd be wrong. They've actually changed up the sneaker pretty dramatically over the last 35 years? 36 years? So last year, Jordan brand reintroduced the 1985 cut, and since then they've been releasing colorways sporadically of this sneaker. And in my opinion, the neutral gray colorway is the best colorway of the 1985s to release so far. So if you didn't know, the neutral gray colorway is one of the original Air Jordan 1 colorways and hasn't retroed since the OG release. I know it's simple, I know it's a little plain, but honestly, it's one of the cleanest Jordan 1 colorways to ever release, and it's one of the most wearable. Not only that, there's something about that 1985 cut that when you wear them, it just feels like you're back in the 80s which might be a good thing for some people. For me, I wasn't born in the 80s, I was born in 92, so it just feel like I was nothing. But at the same time, it makes me feel like I was a part of that era. Hmm. Also, if you missed out on the other pairs of Air Jordan 1 85s and you wanna feel like what it felt like to wear a pair of 1985 Jordan 1s, the neutral grays really are the cheapest colorway that you can grab. So there's that. Next up is a shoe that may cause some controversy because of its, in my opinion, low placement on this list, and that's the Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1 Highs. So I think it's fair to say that this shoe might be the most hyped up sneaker release of 2021 as a whole. I mean, the sneaker just released like a month ago and it's already going for $3,500. It's ridiculous. And don't get me started on the bots. The bots ruined this release and it was almost impossible to get a pair. In fact, I don't know one person who got a pair for retail. So if you're into sneakers at all, you probably already know the idea behind this collaboration. It's a triple collaboration between Fragment, Travis Scott, and Jordan Brand. Three collaborators that just make resale prices spike. This sneaker comes in a white, black, and blue colorway and still features a lot of the details that were found on the original Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 highs. Namely, the backwards Nike swoosh, the nylon material around the ankle, and also the stash pocket hidden in the ankle. Apparently, the colorway is inspired by a sample Air Jordan 1 colorway that never ended up releasing, but in my opinion, I think there's a good reason why the colorway didn't ever release because it kinda sucks. Okay, maybe I'm being harsh. It's a white, black, and blue Air Jordan 1. You can't really go wrong with those colorways on this sneaker, but there's something about the eye stay of the shoe being the same color as the midfoot portion of the shoe that just looks wrong to me. And I know that's something that's done on like the bread Jordan 1s, my favorite sneaker of all time, the Royals and the Shadows and all that sort of good stuff, but at the same time, when it's done in black, it just looks more solid. I don't know what it is. So while I don't dislike this sneaker, of course I would love to grab a pair if I could grab a pair for retail or maybe a good resale price. I think the reason this sneaker is so popular is purely based off hype. It's just a cloudy sneaker for clout's sake. Like that's all it is. I don't know, maybe I'm just salty, but there are other Jordan 1s that released this year and will release this year that I'd much rather have. Next up at number four is the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1 Freeze Out. So it's been a while since we've gotten the original Chicago Air Jordan 1 release. In fact, I think the last time we got an OG Chicago colorway was back in 2015. So with the current popularity of Air Jordan 1s, it makes sense that the Chicago colorway is one of the most coveted colorways. So of course, when Michael Jordan's son collaborates with Michael Jordan on a pair of Jordan 1s, it's probably gonna be in the Chicago colorway. And that's exactly what Trophy Room did. They created a Chicago Air Jordan 1 with some weird sparkly details in the upper and a clear outsole. So at the beginning of the year, I'm not gonna lie, I said that this sneaker would probably be sneaker of the year, but after having been through a majority of 2021, 
I don't think it's even near the top. Maybe that's not true, maybe it's in the top five, but it's not number one. So the idea behind this colorway is based on the freeze out name. The upper of the sneaker is supposed to look like it's frozen, and that's why it's got this weird sort of clear, sparkly sandpaper look to it, which I actually don't like at all. In my opinion, it just makes the sneaker look a little cheesy. It's not bad, but it just isn't how I'd like a pair of Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. I would just rather have the OG pair. I do think the storytelling is there, and I think the rest of the sneaker is awesome. I like the clear outsole with the Chicago stars on the bottom. It all looks great. The only thing is that freeze out upper, I just can't get behind it. But as I'm sure you know, the biggest story behind this sneaker is not actually the sneaker itself, it's the release controversy. So apparently Marcus Jordan, the son of Michael Jordan who owns the store Trophy Room, may have backdoored a lot of pairs of this sneaker. In fact, so many pairs that there were barely any pairs to sell for retail. Now to be fair, that's all rumors, nothing is confirmed yet, at least not to my knowledge, so I'm not accusing him of doing anything. I just think it's a little shady that most pairs ended up on the secondary market before the sneaker even came out. And again, I'm salty because this is a shoe I would have liked to have in my collection for retail or close to retail, not for $3,500 or whatever it is right now. Regardless, Chicago colorway Air Jordan 1 will always be near the top of the list when it comes to Jordan 1 sneakers. Next up at number three are the Air Jordan 1 University Blues. So in my opinion, this is a newer colorway of the Air Jordan 1 done perfectly. The sneaker comes in a white leather upper overlaid by a light blue nubuck or a university blue nubuck accented by black details on the Nike swoosh and around the ankle. It's essentially Chicago color blocking without the red and I think it looks incredible. In fact, out of all the sneakers on this list, I think this is one of the only pairs that I actually own and that's because I put out effort to actually grab it because I like it so much. It's not exactly a UNC colorway, it's definitely a little bit lighter, but you can see where the inspiration came from and I think that lighter blue does work really well on this sneaker. And again, I think it's nubuck used very well on a pair of Jordan 1s. Nubuck can ruin a pair of Jordan 1s, but this one definitely makes this pair. And if you don't have a pair of these and you want a pair of these, I would say grab them sooner than later because I think this is one of those colorways where the resale price is just going to skyrocket as time goes on. Next up at number two is the Air Jordan 1 Patent Bread. This is obviously another sneaker that has yet to release and in fact it won't even release until the day before the end of the year. And unfortunately that kind of sucks for me because this is probably one of my favorite sneakers to release all year. I mean the Air Jordan 1 Bread is my favorite colorway of all time so any variant of that I'm going to be hyped on. So the Air Jordan 1 Patent Bread is essentially just a patent leather bread Air Jordan 1. And even though I don't love patent leather because I think it creases a little bit weird, especially on Jordan 1 sneakers, it's a bread Jordan 1 and I'm gonna grab as many pairs of these as I possibly can. I mean, okay, yeah, if you're a fan of the Chicago ones, you might think that they're better, but in my opinion, these are just right up there with it, if not a little bit, a little bit higher. And kind of an interesting detail, the patent bread Air Jordan 1s also come with a glossy box that kind of looks like patent leather. It's interesting, it's different, it's not the most exciting box in the world, but it's a nice touch. And believe you me, as soon as I have a pair of these, I will be reviewing them for you guys. I'm gonna try and grab a pair early. If anyone knows anyone who has a pair early that's legit, obviously, um, let me know, because I would like them and I would like to review them. So please hit me up. And you know what? Again, I'm not a fan of patent leather, but there's something about the patent leather on this shoe that just makes it like glisten. I don't know. It's perfect. Actually, you know what? If they had done the Trophy Room Air Jordan 1s in patent leather, that kind of would have made it look like it's frozen. That might have been a freeze out look that I would have preferred. I guess to round off this segment, by far, it's my most anticipated sneaker of the year, no question. And then finally, rounding off the list at number one, we've got the Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1 Lowe's. Bet you didn't see that one coming. That was actually kind of a surprise to me too. Now, I know I kind of hated on the Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1 highs, but I still think it's a good collaboration. And when the colorway is done right, it's a winner. And I think the Travis Scott Fragment Air Air Jordan 1 Low is a sneaker where the colorway is done perfectly. For me, the Fragment Air Jordan 1s is one of those sneakers that have always been a grail of mine that I've always wanted, and this sneaker reminds me so much of that shoe, not only because it's a Fragment collaboration, but also because the colorway is so similar. I also think the fact that the sneaker features an off-white colored backwards Nike swoosh really makes the sneaker look more interesting and different. There's something about it that I just really love. I didn't like the first Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Lowe's, but this one, maybe it's the addition of the blue and the fact that it looks like a pair of fragments that I love. I don't know what it is, but I think this is the best Jordan 1 to release all year. I know that's crazy to say, and if there was a regular bread Jordan 1, that would've been at the top of the list, but this is definitely up there for me, and this is a pair that I may have to pay resale for. I hate to say it, but I may have to do it. Sorry, sneaker collection, I'm gonna have to trade a couple of you guys, or sell a couple of you guys to make this happen, but it's probably gonna happen before the end of the year. In my opinion, triple collaborations can be overkill, and I think in some cases they have been overkill, but on this Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1, they all came together to create something that I think is perfect, and the best Jordan 1 low to release in a very, very long time, if not ever. I know that's like high praise for a Jordan 1 low, but I'm serious. 
Actually, I would love to know which Travis Scott Fragment Air Jordan 1 you guys like better personally. Don't base it on the hype, base it only on the colorway and which shoe you would actually wear more because you like that sneaker more. Let me know in the comment section down below. That's why this shoe is at number one and not the other one because I think this one just looks better. But that pretty much wraps up the top 10 Air Jordan 1s of 2021. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this list and whether you felt like I left some sneakers out or whether you felt like my order was a little out of order. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today we're checking out the brand new Apothecary 3.0 sock. So we've taken your feedback on our previous generations of sock to help inform the decisions to make the Apothecary 3.0 the best sock ever. The sock 3.0 features our brand new proprietary ISO weave technology for a foot hugging fit as well as our new mesh design which allows for even more breathability. We've also adjusted the width of sock 3.0 to fit you even better as well as add a nice little hidden detail. We've also changed the material blend on sock 3.0 to make it even more comfortable comfortable and even more durable. So make sure to stay tuned for our next drop by following us at Apothecary on Instagram or going to our website apothecary.com.